Good morning, gang. Happy Friday morning. Okay, here it is. Well, <clears throat> it's a little anniversary for Mrs. P and I today. Today is the day that uh, we moved into our house five years ago. So we've now been in this house in Tennessee for five years. With that, of course, means my home insurance bill was due today. And, of course, I paid the bill, choking over it. My insurance, my home insurance went up 17% this year. Okay. This is the deal. Uh, if we take a look at it, we saw the CPI numbers come in on Wednesday. We saw the PPI numbers come in yesterday. And inflation still exists, right? How many of you, probably a lot of you, like me, are trying to get, I don't want to use the term off the grid, but because that kind of connotates kind of just electricity. But how many of you are trying to get as outside of the system as you can, you know, by producing your own energy, by producing your own water, you know, collecting it however you can, okay, by growing and raising your own food not because gee the world is going to end okay because we're worried about an emp or some sort of armageddon event but because it's the only way you can make ends meet i mean this is this is where it's getting insane okay maybe some of you guys saw that uh TikTok video the day the other day it wound up going viral it was talked I mean it was one of the stories on Fox News yesterday a couple other channels have I mean mainstream media news channels reported on this TikToker coming out and saying I make three times the national minimum wage and I can't afford to live okay so I don't know what he made the National, the federal minimum wage is seven and a quarter, so that means he's making just under 22 bucks an hour. Okay, that's forty five, forty six thousand dollars a year. Okay, he should be able to live on that. That's pretty near the median income for the United States. If he's out in California or something like that, then he's making 60 grand. Okay, then he's above the median wage in the country and can't live. You look at what's going on. I mentioned my home insurance. I'll give you this. In Joe's presidency, the average home insurance premium has gone up 110%. Insurance has more than doubled on your house. Now, I don't know what it is on car insurance because I can't correlate on me and Mrs. P because we change vehicles here and there, so I can't tell you. Okay. Uh, but it's starting to get to the point where maybe the pain is finally starting to be realized by the public. I mean, give me this. McDonald's out in California is promoting their new $25 value meal. Got to pay for those $20 employees somehow. You know, 40 chicken nuggets, nuggets, and a bag of fries. Now, not many people can eat 40 chicken nuggets all by themselves. Okay, so let's say two people eat 20 apiece, all right? And one bag of fries. Don't even so much as throw a Coke in there, all right? Even then, that's 12 and a half bucks to eat at McDonald's and probably leave hungry. Hmm. $25 value meal? Right. Okay. How about the 99 cents only stores announcing this week that they are closing all of them because they can't afford to sell stuff for 99 cents only anymore. Have you ever been in one of those stores? I mean, the only one I ever knew, there was one in Vegas. I went in there and it was mostly junk. Okay. I mean, I felt like I was walking into a garage sale. They got to go out of business because there's nothing that they can do to 
make ends meet. To give you an idea of how hungry people are, anybody catch the story about a truck driver, refrigerated truck driver, you know, semi-trailer, carrying pork? Somebody stole 12,000 pounds of pork out of his truck while he was sleeping. Guy, you know, guy's got to pull into a truck stop somewhere and take a nap. They're only allowed to drive so many hours before they have to get some rest. And somebody stole $12,000 worth of pork from it. You know, I, I seem to go through life and it's like, all right, back a couple of generations ago, people tried to steal money out of an armored car. Then you had all the stories of, you know, let's go back to the, as they call it in New York, the bad old days, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, where the mob was in stealing stereos or TVs or cigarettes or something like that out of trucks. Now people are stealing pork, food, okay? This is third world country crap. You know, watch any video on, I mean, they're all over the place of people going into the grocery store or Walmart or whatever it is into the self-checkout lanes and scan one, scan one, fake scan another one, throw it in the bag, you know, going crazy like this. I'm not talking about the looters that are running into a store to steal a bunch of Air Jordans. I'm talking about people have gotten to the point where to eat, they're now stealing food. This is how bad the inflation has gotten. And this is, the pain is finally starting to come into play. I mean, I'll give you this one. I'll post it below so you can see it. CNN, liberal CNN, has an article up <clears throat> from Wednesday entitled, With inflation back up, the long-predicted storm clouds in the economy may actually be forming. Hmm, is even CNN, the mouthpiece of the DNC, even realizing that Bidenomics is destroying the country and we are screwed? You know, this is just crazy insane and how bad things are going to get. You know, I'll give you this. We talk about power all the time, you know, solar power and everything like that. And I will give you guys just a quick heads up. If you're in the market for a solar generator, wait a couple of days uh, this weekend. I've got some real incredible sales that I want to tell you about. I think it's Sunday or Monday that I uh, am supposed to announce those. Okay, so if you're looking at getting a little more self-sufficient that way, Go for it. Today, weather permitting, I'm supposed to get my solar panels put up. Everybody's coming over here to help me do this. And we will be crawling around my roof all day. I'm excited because <clears throat> I'll be able to cut my electric bill in half. Uh, you know, Again, not everything I can do. I can't run my HVAC system on what I've got. Not, I could, but not efficiently. Uh, but I will have... A way to reduce my bills that way. This is where it's going. And people are talking about crazy, crazy stuff on inflation hedge, inflation hedge, inflation hedge, right? What do we do? What do we do? Any of you that listen to, oh, I don't know, me or Rudy or any of the Yankee Stacker or Silver Dragons or any of the other YouTube channels <clears throat> that have been telling you for years to buy silver and gold, you're probably pretty happy right now. In case anybody didn't notice, in the overnight markets, gold went over 2400 I want to give you this. We just crossed 2000 about two months ago. Gold is up 20% in two months, okay? 
the stock market? No. Okay. I'll give you this. Since 2000, the gold has appreciated a little better than 9% a year. Since 2000, the S&P has appreciated a little bit better than 5% a year. Yeah. Okay. Just want to give you that. Now, silver. Silver's crushed 29. Silver may break 30 here very soon. We haven't seen $30 silver in years. Okay. I mean, we're already at a five, six year high for silver right now. Okay. We're going back decades at this point where silver's going. But the, the dangerous part about that is the price of gold or silver doesn't effectively go up. It's still one ounce of gold or one ounce of silver, what you have. The reason the value is higher is not because gold is worth more. It's because what it's compared to, the dollar is worth less and less and less and less. Okay, And you've all heard the stories about, gee, you could buy a men's suit in <clears throat> 1920 for, you know, a tailored men's suit. 1920 for a one ounce gold piece, you could buy a one tailored men's suit in 2024 for a one ounce gold piece. Hell, you go back and buy yourself a good toga in the Roman Empire for a one ounce gold piece. Okay. Gold, the, the tradability of gold and silver stays stable. It's what it's comparing to the dollar that's getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. And this is all because of inflation. And I had to laugh yesterday where you had the idiots on The View saying inflation isn't Joe's fault. He's doing such a great job. Yeah, you know, what, what's, what one of them said, I can't remember if it was Sonny Hostin or Joy Behar, said, oh, they need to go back and take a civics class. And I'm thinking to myself, how stupid are you? Civics is how government works. Economics is how money works. Maybe they need to go back and take a, oh, I don't know, eighth grade economics class and learn about supply and demand. You know, all the sending of money to Ukraine caused inflation. Why? Because we had to print a crap load of money to do it that we don't have. So we devalued the dollar. Letting in 10 million illegals. Yeah, that caused inflation. Why? Because it's a little thing called supply and demand. There are only so many apartments. There's only so many apples. And when more people want them than there are that exist, the price goes up. This is what was done by Biden. These useless breathers on The View haven't a clue. And for some reason, people still watch that show. I have no idea. The, the brain-dead population amongst us watching four or five brain-dead idiots talk about stuff that they don't know. But this is, this is what's going on, guys. Finally, it looks like Maybe the tide has turned and the world is waking up. You know, we see all the stories day in and day out about uh, different people saying, I voted for Biden in 2020. I can't do it again. You know, he's been a disaster. It doesn't mean they're not all going to go vote for RFK or go vote for Trump. Who knows what they're going to do? But I'll tell you this, Mickey Mouse would be a better president than Joe's, Joe has been. I got to give Barack Obama credit for one thing. He hasn't got much right in his career in politics. Pretty much everything he's done has been a disaster, kind of like Joe. Okay, But I got to give Obama credit for one thing, because in this one, he was absolutely correct when he said, never underestimate Joe's ability to fuck things up. And you know what? On that one, he was spot on. Pinball out.